Ali, dear, I know that the water that comes out of the earth calms your soul down. Ali, dear, it's me, Abuza. The ignorance of these people plundered your life as well as mine. They want to send me into exile once again. Ali, haven't you heard the Caliph's decree? No one is allowed to see Abu Za'or. Abuza will be happy forever if Ali sees him off. After running into Marwan ibn Hakam, Imam Ali saw Abu Zar off and said, Abu Zar, 
You faced their wrath just because you obeyed God. So, be hopeful for God's sake. These people are worried about their worldly affairs. But you're worried our religion might perish. Abu Zad, always stay with the truth. And don't be afraid of anything but falsehood. You have to be aware that God will show you the way out of all problems. Must be a booza. <laughs> <laughs> hey. an angel or human? I'm Umza. Is it really you? Mm-hmm. I've got used to illusions. Should I believe it? Believe it. Illusion is born out of loneliness. You and I won't be lonely anymore. You should have been in the Levant now. I was. After Movier found out that you've been sent into exile, he sent me here so that we can be together. So even Movier sometimes does good things. Umza, you're really welcome here. I hope that you're okay, lonely man. I am. Oh, homeless lovebird. Are you the runaway Abuzar? How are you? <laughs> you burden? <laughs> I've missed you. <laughs> you can't run away from me. I'll find you wherever you go. <laughs> well, Abuzar, we have to go. Get some rest.
We don't have enough time. We have a long way to go. Forgive us, Umza. You've been trustworthy people, and you were patient on the trip. We were just like burdens on your shoulders. It's you who should forgive us. May God reward you. I have some barley bread. If you consider it as food, you can spend tonight with us poor people. Thank you, Abduza. I consider it as food, but I can't stay. Pray for us. May God protect you. <laughs> Let's go, brothers. Let's go. Hey. 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 Well, besides barley bread, we have a camel, two goats, and a black tent. We have God and a daughter. We'll plant a palm tree for our daughter. And we'll build a house to worship our God. Sir, I think Rabaz is our last living station. Abuza, I also think the same. Umzar! Stop! Umzar, stop! Where are you going? Umzar! Stop! Where are you going? Don't be restless. Don't be restless. I saw a black spot in the distance that was moving. It's an illusion, Umza. It's an illusion. The Hajj rituals are over. The caravans are all gone. The arrows of death come towards us from every direction. We don't have any bread. 
The drought has killed our goats. Our camel has fled to the desert. Our daughter, Abuzar. Our daughter. If we don't do all we can to save her life, we'll be sinners. Where are you going? I'm going to see the Caliph from Zah. Come back soon, very soon. Come back with full hands. You've come back too late, Abuza. You've come back too late. Resurrect her with the children of the prophets. Seeds. Get up, Abuza. We can fill our stomachs with these seeds. Huh? Plant seeds. Get up, Abuza. We have to fight with death. Uh. 
Why are you laughing? Why shouldn't I? When... When death has made me so greedy. What I'm doing is something useless. We have come to this world to live. Now we'll go back to the earth to become honorable. So why are you afraid? An old person's fear of death is just like a child's crying after its birth. If children knew what was going to happen to them in their lives, they'd laugh. They'd laugh. <laughs> I testify that there is no God except Allah. I testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Abu And I testify that Ali is the vicegerent of Allah. Abu Zar's death while he was alone in the desert, came as a shock to the Caliph. He prayed for Abu Zar. It caused upheaval in Iraq and Egypt. Every day some people would gather in front of the closed door of the Caliph's palace to complain about the Umayyad tribe's oppression. The Caliph summoned the governors of different regions to his palace to find a solution for their agitation. Have you come all the way from Egypt from the Hajj pilgrimage to turn your back on Kaaba? Ah! If you have any complaints, speak up, I'm all ears. You already burned some of the letters without reading them. We're a bunch of farmers. But no matter what we sow, we reap sorrow. The milk in our wives' breasts has dried up. You took our fertile lands on the banks of the Nile River. You took it from us. We plow rocks on the sand-covered lands of the Nile. <laughs> Why have you left your homeland, Malek? Do you hate Kufa? No. I hate the governor of Kufa. You have to consider Kufa as a thing of the past, Fabir. And what about Basra? Basra and Kufa are neighbors. If an earthquake happens in Kufa, it will shake Basra as well. How long are you going to stay away from your homeland, Malek? Hmm. I'll stay here to see what the Caliph will do after consulting with the governors. That's useless. Don't pin your hopes on it. Those who've consulted with the Caliph are the people who are behind the oppression. Be quick, Malik. Close the gates of Kufa to the son of Ars. I have fast horses that can run even faster than the wind. Kufa doesn't have any governor. What are you waiting for? I'll provide you with whatever you need. Food supplies and anything else. You might need. Listen to what they've written. If the Caliph doesn't bar the Umayyad tribe from ruling over all Muslims, you can also listen to it. 
if the caliph doesn't bar the Umayyad tribe from ruling over all Muslims and doesn't act based on justice, it means that the caliph isn't a just person. And doesn't act based on justice and doesn't follow the tradition of the sheikhs, the immigrant and the helper, companions will consider their own allegiances with the caliph null and void. They're the ones who want us to be dismissed. Tala and Zabir. They both dream about taking over control of Iraq. Saad bin Abi Waqas, the dismissed governor of Kufir, and Amir bin al the dismissed governor of Egypt. They are still grieving over losing their palaces. What about you, Amar? In hope of ruling over which region have they tricked you? Have you also sealed this letter? Even ruling over my own house is a huge burden on me. If you see my seal on the letter, it's because of the rights that have been violated. The rights aren't determined by this letter, but by the road that God has given to the Caliph. He has become a Caliph only because of the votes by Saad and his people. If Saad's seal isn't worth anything now, how has the Caliph obtained his robe? If Ali had sealed the letter... I would accept the accusations and give up the governorship. You know very well why Ali has chosen to remain silent. Mm. The only thing I know is that Ali has become an expert in digging wells. I've heard he can find out how deep the water runs under the ground just by putting his ear to the ground. <laughs> Ali's silence is full of unheard sayings. I wish the Umayyad tribe had sharp ears to hear them. Stay here, Amar. You're one of Ali's devotees. But you owe me compensation for sneering at me. Do you remember when you were accompanying Abu Zar alongside with Ali? You revolted against the Caliph's decree and laughed at Hamar's son. I'm stupid if I don't make you compensate for it in this world and hope that you'll pay for it in the hereafter. You were an honest messenger for the immigrant and helper companions. You've sealed and approved this letter which doesn't consider the Caliph as a just person and wants us to be dismissed. Hm. You've been very kind to us that you conveyed the message. So you have to be rewarded before you go. We've become the laughing stock of this wild tribe. Get up! Leave me alone, Malek. Leave me alone. I'm worried I might get used to it. People like Malek won't always be around to help me get up. There was a time when I was Abu Jal's slave and Muhammad's follower. The only things I remember are the lashes of Abu Jal out of his ignorance and the sunburnt body of Amar. One day on charges of devotion to Muhammad. The next on charges of devotion to Ali. You see, my leg. My heart and my tongue are enough to prove my devotion. Let my body remain Abu Jal's slave forever. We are wasting time, Amar! We're wasting time. The greed for ruling in this tribe can only be stopped by blood, not by advice.
We have drawn our swords. We have drawn our swords, Omar. We can't bring the Umayyad tribe to its knees by anything but the strike of a sword. I'm going. Malek. Don't stay away from Ali. The cowards, Omar. Ali has been waiting for us for years with his silence. We'll go towards Kufa. Welcome to the house of your memories, Governor. Mm. Mm. The house is still frightening. Abu Safan's grandeur has made it look frightening. Mm. Otherwise, it's an ordinary house. Sometime in the past, a snake, or I'd better say a lioness like Hind, used to breathe in this house. Be careful, Kaget. Be careful not to make him angry. <laughs> I'm careful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Why don't you leave this hellhole, Father? I'll make you a house in the Levant that would look like the heaven the prophet talked about. <laughs> you can keep the heaven for yourself. I need a house in which I can rule. <laughs> mm. uh. Her jaws isn't safe anymore. The Caliph doesn't have an army or any followers. There's upheaval in Egypt and Kufa. In no time, a bunch of hungry people who would dare to do anything will draw their swords to kill the Caliph. Mm -hmm. The upheaval is because of Marwan's stupid dreams. He's lived in exile for years and knows nothing about hatred. What the Caliph did was a favor to Marwan. But an injustice to himself. He has control. He has control over the Caliph. I've seen with my own eyes that the Caliph is in fact Marwan, not Osman. Where do you stand in this scenario? Where should I stand? So the pillars of our government wouldn't shake. I asked the Caliph to come to the Levant, but he didn't agree. Instead, he told me to send an army to Yazreb. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. I really don't know. What are you eating? Sautéed camel meat. Hmm. You still take big bites. You're not young anymore. Eat some light food that can easily be digested. Hmm. Does your maid take your orders? She doesn't focus on a job. She's young. She's always busy preparing henna or combing her hair. She breaks a lot of dishes. Hmm. Uh... You need a middle-aged maid who can focus on her job. Give your playful maid to me, and I'll buy you another maid. Oh, no. 
Oh, no, boy. I know how to act like a king. You would better take care of whatever you have for yourself, and I'll take care of mine. <laughs> uh, a son would never steal anything from his father. Only if he isn't his son. The son will eventually inherit whatever his father has. <laughs> Only if Abu Sufyan is actually dead. <laughs> I know, father. I'm not kidding. I want someone who can... Who can take good care of you. I've gotten used to her. I wish you would come with me to the Levant. I don't have a good feeling about the Levant. I've grown up here in Hejaz. You can take my body to the Levant. What will you do with my soul? Do you want me to rot away in the Levant? This place has become more insecure than ever. Nah. I've seen this place more insecure than today. Have you forgotten the time when Muhammad took over control of Kaaba from us and would rule over us in our very own house? I ran away from the battlefield at that time, but I don't want to leave my house today. You don't know Hejaz better than I do. The Levant wasn't an option. At that time, Muhammad was in Hejaz, and the people were united to obey him. You have to be scared of Hejaz. They have sown the seeds of hatred against the Umayyad tribe all across this dark land. Blood. 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 What will grow out of blood besides blood-stained swords? Come to the Levant to save your life. I've established an internal government in the Levant more frightening than Caesars and Kasras. A government more popular than Mohammed's. Richer and more powerful than Prophet Solomon. You wouldn't be Abu Sufyan's son if you'd acted differently. Now go and equip the army the Caliph has asked for. Mm. I won't sacrifice my army in Hejaz. If Marwan is a wise Caliph, he knows what to do. If you try to make up for other people's stupidity in the government, you'll be a loser. If you want the people in Hejaz, to pay allegiance to you after the Caliph's death, you have to be impartial. You have to bring your army to Hejaz to support the poor Caliph. But don't fight anyone. I knew that the stupid guy would finally cause the Caliph's demise. Forget about disrespecting us as his relatives. The unemotional guy is really ungrateful to us. I'm really sorry that a nice girl like Mariam is in that ungrateful man's arms. Tell them to make way for us. The way is open. Sayyid ibn Naaz. But only the pilgrims. We have closed our homeland doors to the Umayyad tribe. People in Kufa recognize Abu Musa Ashari as their governor. Go give their message to the Caliph. The Caliph consulted with us. We found some shortcomings and we want to make up for them. When a problem can easily be solved, why should we make it more complicated? We want the Caliph to do what the heads of the emigrant and the helper companions have asked for. Malek, you should remember that you're the first person who's drawing your sword against the Caliph. In a war between brothers, the first drop of blood that falls on the ground will never dry until the end of the world. The first drop of blood? You will put an eternal curse upon Muhammad's nation. The first drop of blood was Dina's that was shed in Kufa. They also broke a bone in Medina. A man is also resting in peace, in the Rabaz Desert, and his voice would never be silenced until the end of the world.
go, Said Ibn As. Don't you even think about coming back to Kufa. People in Kufa, young and old, are ready to fight. They're equipped with arrows, spears, and swords. If men can't do their jobs, women are ready to throw stones with catapults. Even if they don't have stones, they'll put their children in the catapults and shoot them at the enemy. Ashari the governor! 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 You see, Sayyid Ibn As. Go tell Marvan and his men if they want to fight. They shouldn't send an army smaller than the army of the Levin to Kufa. I won't leave Kufa, Malek. You can kill me, or you can forgive me. People in Kufa only punish their children if they do something wrong. Get up, Wadan. You're a prisoner of your own house. Ashari the governor! 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 Oh, uncle, don't ruin Kufa. If you leave Kufa to Ashari, we'll lose all of Iraq. Marwan, you won't last long without consulting with me. Hey, Uncle. Hey, Uncle. Target? Oh no! After Malik al-Ashdar's uprising in Kufa, Muhammad ibn Abu Quzayfe and Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr rose up in Egypt. The two Muhammads were the sons of two caliphs. One of them was the third caliph, Osman's son. And the other one was the first caliph, Abu Bakr Sadiq's son. They both considered Marwan as the main reason behind the problems. Therefore, they were ready to uproot the corruption and oppression. After the revolt, after the revolt, Osman's stepson stayed in Egypt, and a group of people from Egypt went to Medina under the command of the mother of the faithful, Aisha's brother. Aisha was angry with Marvan and his men, and she knew that if she stayed in Medina, she would also have to get into the conflict. So, 
She made a wise decision and packed up for a trip to the Umrah Hajj pilgrimage in Mecca. The heads of the emigrant and helper companions either joined the rebels, like Tala and Zubair, or remained impartial, like Sad ibn Abi Waqas. Marwan was hopeful about the Levant and thought Mauvier's army might help him, but it was to no avail. He sent messengers one after another to the Levant, but there was no news from the messengers nor the Levant army. The Caliph was all alone. 